it was 3D printing industry.com that published they had some awesome headline like 100 3D printing experts give us their predictions for 2020. And I skimmed Were it. We asked Oh no, about not this? 2020. No, we were. Not 2020. It was 2030. 2030. They had a different headline that was 80 3D printing experts give their predictions about 2020. They found 20 more people. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. Um, well, now but... it's 101. <laughs> now it's 101 81. because the world is getting our opinion, even though nobody asked for it. Um, well, I'm asking for it. What is your opinion of the state of 3D printing in 10 years? Um, I don't know about 10 years. I was mostly talk- thinking about this year. Um, but I have a handful of opinions from the engineering industrial side of things i think that 2020 and probably through 2020 through 2025 we're gonna see a huge growth in high strength plastics a lot of people think metal is a huge hype right now we saw um, new metal 3d printing companies popping up pretty much monthly Mm -hmm. throughout 2019 but all of those companies are just at the very starting point of developing their technology and finding a place for it. Whereas high strength plastics are really just an extension of FDM, FFF technology that's been around for 20, 30 years. And so I really think, and we've started to see the, the bits and pieces of it with um, uh, anisoprint. Uh, starting up in Russia, and then Desktop Metals Fiber Machine, mm-hmm. uh, which has huge promises that I can't wait to, to see. Um, High-strength plastics, I think, are going to continue to see more and more widespread adoption. High-strength and high-temperature mm-hmm. would be probably my biggest prediction. I think if I'm looking 10 years down the road, um, I think the ubiquity is just going to be the most common thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it will just be very, very commonplace for you to go and shop as a consumer and have something just like it's genetically modified today. And that was a, a novel thing yeah. in the 1940s. Today, uh, you'll go and pick up a widget off the shelf and it'll be 3D printed and you'll, you might never know as, as a consumer. Um, I think that there's a lot of scale applications that will come around and there will be certain products where you know, there are first movers for sure. But I think mm-hmm. a lot of things are ripe for 3D printing to uh, upend their current processes. In, in light of upending current processes, and again, I was just reading something earlier today where what some people are most looking forward to is eliminating shelves, if you will. And so you wouldn't be going to the store and pulling something off a shelf. I mean, maybe they took it off the printer and put it on a shelf, but disrupting the high volume location based oh, production yeah, 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 yeah. Where, where production can become increasingly more local as 3D printing comes lower in cost, as materials come lower in cost. Um, I saw something like that that was uh, for bread. For bread? It was on like a news magazine <laughs> show on the weekends with like Mo Rocca or something, and they were in a grocery store in Great Britain, and okay. this guy had invented a machine that you walk up and push a button, and it makes you a fresh loaf of bread right oh, there. I love an automated that. thing. And then you go, and it's 45 seconds, and out comes your That's loaf of bread. That's amazing. Yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting. Who doesn't love fresh baked bread? It was that a is giant so cool. machine <laughs> for what it produced. But it was like, I don't want to go back to the bakery and get something. And yeah. Then, but like, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm sure it's fresh, but you can do it right there. So you're saying you'd be able to do that kind of a thing with headphones, with yes. a USB adapter for your computer, with whatever it might be. Right. I mean, those are all kind of like high-reaching things. Because they have electronics and they have plastics and they yeah, have all but, this other but, stuff. But if we're looking but, in the future, who knows? So you're, you're right. Um, it could easily be integrated with multiple systems, pick and play, CNC, yeah. whatever. Um, a great example might be a phone case, you know, simple multi-material plastic. Sure. Um, we're only going to talk about phones, apparently. I've got a little clip that clips onto my vent that holds my phone while I'm driving so yep. that I have my navigation in front of me. I think everyone should have one. If you don't have one, go buy one. If you're an Uber driver, you have to have one. Yeah, be safe while you're driving, okay? It, life is too short to walk around or drive around with your phone in your lap while you're navigating places. Right, Ben? Thank you. Anyway. Ever since uh, I had kids, <laughs> I stopped doing like, is, this, is this going back to a story you and Ben had? Um, no, Ben just had a look on his face that made it seem like he was one of those people that has their phone in their lap while they're navigating something. No, I uh, just out of pure luck, 
I have this awesome, um, I, in my front seat of my truck, I have a third in the middle. Okay. I fold down, and the headrest holds my phone perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My cup holder. All right, so you're, you're like walking that line, but, you know. I'll no, my, my, it's my just cup that it's right in this view. <laughs> perfect. To does it? Yeah. Yeah. it? But does ever since I had that. kids, I really <laughs> stopped. I lost the urge of dying in a car crash completely. When, when did you start that Was urge? there an yeah. urge, Ben? At what age? Right <laughs> around urge. sophomore year of college when I realized how much longer I had of college. It was somewhere around <laughs> finals of sophomore year. Gotcha. Good. That's well, important. I'm really happy you've grown out of that, that phase. Ben, um, you appreciate it. Ben, do you have a, a prediction? Or if it's not a prediction, is there something that you want to see out of 3D printing? Depends. One year or 10 years? Is this a 2030 let's, or 2021? Let's do both. Let's start with 2020. Uh, 2020. 21 by the end of 2020 yeah no, i'm kidding it doesn't matter um <laughs> i think just prices are going to go down uh, okay the market is starting to get saturated competition is going to start taking over and i think prices have to go down yeah oh. prices just, have already gone down and i might argue with you i think we've hit the bottom really all right i don't I think you. we have there is a current printer now it's comes out of China, it's the EZ 3D X1 A2, well, whatever. We can sacrifice um, quality, but it's look at $89. flat screen TVs. <laughs> it's $89. Do you remember the cost of flat screen TVs when they first came out? They I were don't. astronomical. The one that I have in my bedroom was $3,000. Right? Oh. You can get the same one it was for obscene. maybe 100 bucks. For, yeah. yeah. Less than that. And it's like and it's twice the size and it's way better That's quality. That's crazy. So with 3D printing, you, you're going to get a crappy printer for $85, whatever it is. Yeah. But I'm saying. <laughs> Soon you can get a nice printer for a whole lot less. Yeah. Can 20, I just tell you? Oh yeah. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. Twenty thirty. By twenty thirty. Okay. Right, by twenty thirty. That, that's a decent goal. As long as it's legal. I'll give you that. <laughs> I want to own at least one three D printed gun, including the barrel. Hmm. I think that that would be really cool to have almost a fully three D printed gun. Uh, but that includes the the high pressure area where you were talking about earlier about higher pressures and higher temperature plastics. Yes. That'd be sweet. That'd be really sweet. You know it's a novelty, not my like main carry gun. Sure. You know what I just thought about, too? Um, I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. Mm. They're going to grow up in STEM programs where they're going to have exposure to 3D printing Definitely. from a really early age. And I think about, I'm not going to call you a kid, even though you were younger than me, oh. um, but somebody like you <laughs> who is a little younger than me and was exposed to this technology, what, around high school? Um, At what age? College. College. Yeah. Think of it's after my think, first year think, of college. Think of the next generation of engineers who are going to grow up utilizing 3D printing, having more access in um, in inner cities too. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the focus on STEM programs now and the integration of 3D printing, I think you're going to see um, the ingenuity of the next generation of engineers have a whole lot more behind it because they're going to have way more time and room for experimentation when you can make things on your own. You don't yeah. have to wait for it anymore, and you don't have to wait to college to try that stuff out. Exactly. Actually, we've in a lot of conversations I've had visiting different customer sites, that's already happening. I talk to so many people who their engineering manager is like, yeah, we, we weren't really looking at 3D printing, but then we hired this intern, and they really said we should be 3D printing, and now we're looking at it more as a business and how we can make use of it. And so um, those interns, they're, they're, nine, yeah. they're 18, yeah. 19, 20 <laughs> years old now, right? Or yeah. they're, they're maybe 23, 24, but they're just starting to bring this stuff into these organizations right. that are 50, 70, 80, 100 years old. Yeah. And that's just going to be more and more prevalent. Yeah. And Meanwhile, to get into that market, to get into that market, to show kids how great we are and to buy from us, Kevin is going to start doing Fortnite dances at the end of every podcast. Yes. At, at the end? <laughs> yeah, when everyone can turn it off. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to put it at the beginning? <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> Woo! Gosh, <man. laughs> On that we note, I feel like that is a Should great... I cut that off? <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> and I... we just ruined our podcast. No. Oh, <laughs> no. What a shame. Um, Good job. If you want to keep it in and embarrass me, that's fine. It's up to you. I would prefer. If I mean, this if is internet live. dance. No. I don't. <laughs> so, so it'll be interesting to see um, 
what exactly the next generation is capable of when yeah. they grow up utilizing 3D printing technology. Yeah, I was going to mention my mom uh, teaches elementary school. Yeah. And they have maker spaces in all of their schools. So yeah. 3D printing is a big part of that. Yeah. And they're like doing intro to programming and all this other stuff where I think you know that's going to have a, an avalanche effect as they we grow got, older. We got a, a, a game for my son for Christmas. Uh, and it's like a beginning to coding okay. game. And so it's like, you know, entry level software programming engineer yeah. kind of stuff. But it's the, the foundational stuff that will lead to good programming later. That's awesome. I would have loved that when I was little. Right? It's cool. I have a sure. lot of hope for them because <laughs> our generation was given cell phones and now all we can do is stare at cell phones. But maybe if we give them a manufacturing tool, all they'll do is like build cool stuff. I had those. Do you remember those We're circuit wasted. boards? <laughs> do you remember the circuit boards you would put together and you'd make like different sounds by connecting different? Yeah. I had like, you could make like a little machine gun sound if you move the red wire to this screw, and I did you could not make. Have oh my that. god! I like had corny it was stuff like that, like a battery pack, and it was a bell, and it was like a motor, and then it had little springs that you mm -hmm. connected with wires. I had one of those, but no like cool sound. No, it wasn't cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was there. not cool. Yeah, uh, but. It would have been cool for me if I was little. Um, anyway, uh, anything else you guys want to mention about the future before we wrap up? Yeah, what do you think is going to get phased out? Say, mm. uh, 10 years from now, 3D printing is huge. I have my 3D printed plastic gun <laughs> walking around with that. What's going to get phased out at the same time? I don't think anything is going to be phased out completely. I'm not willing to make that claim. But I think the trend that we've seen is FDM 3D printing – um, will become a commodity. I think we're well on our way <laughs> in that direction hmm. where in today's world even, if you want something 3D printed, you can go to the library. You can give your kid a file to take to school. You can go on Stratasys Direct or Proto Labs or anything and get parts printed. CAD Dimensions can print your parts too. Yeah. Actually, I uh, should probably in this room. Us. Hold on, I'm going to pan right now. <laughs> See all these printers? Yeah. Yeah. So we for you. we we use these <laughs> printers to print parts for customers when they send us files and want stuff printed. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's accessible. I think there's still like a learning curve to it, and people don't entirely understand all the limitations. But if you want to learn and you want to print things, it's it's all there. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll only get easier and easier, and machines will get easier to use. They'll get lower in price. Um, and yeah, it'll just be it'll be a normal thing it'll be a commodity i think some of the other technologies like sla and uh sls those are still going to be industry technologies mm -hmm. even some of the newer ones we're seeing with the high strength composites and the uh um what's the other one high speed centering is an exciting technology that's really just getting started um but normal people won't need those right those will still be for businesses right. i think you're kind of wrong i think that malls will get phased out they already are, mm. but everyone likes highly customized things now. So you could go to a mall and get something really generic. Yeah. Or if you just go on whatever online store it is, and you get it tailored directly for you. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point, too. Um, a really big retail trend is high customization, yeah. and 3D printing is perfect for that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like your, your example earlier with phone cases is kind of low-hanging fruit, but you yeah. take that beyond that, too. A, a custom door knocker for your front door or whatever it might be and you can get really really creative yeah. i'd love a 3d printer just in my house we were talking um before the the podcast started we had uh, we were missing a clip and we we're yeah. like oh we need to 3d print this clip because <laughs> we can't we went to guitar center to try to find this clip and the guy didn't have the clip and i'm like we can't find this clip i have some big news we need to 3d print the clip we finally have new equipment everyone actually has a nice microphone yes. we have another yes. one in the mail because uh, ken was very busy today uh, thank you to YouTube. So thank you for watching our videos enough I know. for us to be able to buy microphones. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, and I feel I feel like we've we've grown up so much having done this podcast for over a year now. Yeah, yeah. Where... Thank you for supporting us. And if you guys, again, we can see this all the time, but we want to hear from you guys. We want comments. We want feedback. We want suggestions. We want topics. If there's something you guys want us to talk about, we're not that intelligent, but we're gonna try. And I really do read all of uh, all the emails that you send me about recommendations, and as obscure as it is, I will listen to all of them. We might not get to it every day <laughs> or every time, but I am definitely entertained and always learn something new, too. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are on the internet or magazines or anything and you see a cool story that you want our yeah. opinion on, feel free to drop it in the comments, and we will either 
reply to it directly. Maybe we'll feature it in the next podcast. Who knows what will happen, but we can guarantee that Ben will read it. Um, anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's sign off. Uh, my name is Adam. We're here with Kevin and Ben. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this sort of thing, uh, maybe you want to subscribe to our channel. There's a button in the in point the, to it in the Pretend app. you're on the screen. In point the down app. to the subscribe. It's there or it's there. I I don't know, man. But somewhere in this general direction, you can figure it out. I believe in you. Subscribe to our channel, and that way, uh, it's free, by the way. And when we drop another podcast, you will be the first ones notified to see it. I'm gonna try it. Point. Click the button right here ish. Because I think it's on the left bottom. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great weekend. See ya. <laughs> Subscribe.